Dijak actually tweeted this. So this was from today, June 27th. He wrote this on a piece of paper. It was typed out. I'll read out the, the statement here. Um, and then I'll, I'll tell you what I think about it. We could discuss it. But here's what he wrote. He wrote, here's the truth. WWE never negotiated with me because there were reports of that recently. Uh, WWE never negotiated with me. We attempted to negotiate and then they stonewalled us. They never made me a single offer. And then they informed me that they would not renew my contract at the 11th hour. Two months ago, I was in one of the best matches in NXT history and a top match of WrestleMania weekend. On that day, a top executive in WWE told me I was crushing it, quote unquote, um, I was slated to feud for the NXT title, but then I got called up to Raw instead. I consistently outperformed everyone's expectations, especially throughout 2023 and early 2024. I never complained about anything or it was difficult to work with. I tirelessly, uh, tirelessly, tire, tirelessly, I can't pronounce that word, pitched ideas to anyone who would listen as recently as the day before I was notified. I never once missed a booking and I was injured one time in seven years for three months. I'm thankful, disappointed, and also excited. This has lit a fire underneath me to relentlessly prove myself to the world. All I ever wanted was a fair shot, and now I have the opportunity to go out and take it. That's enough talk. Now it's time to do or die, Jack. Uh, my last day under a WWE contract is June 28, 2024, which is tomorrow. Uh, booking interviews, he put an email out there, and then get ready to feast your fucking eyes. Donovan die, Jack. So he put that out about an hour and a half ago on Twitter. The, the long and short of it, he's not sticking around with WWE. It's not his call. Um, like I said earlier, I don't think, or rather, I do think the idea, the, the report from a few months ago was, I think he hired, and a few other people have done this as well, they hired, like, um, agencies or representatives to, to kind of negotiate their upcoming deals and whatnot. Like, there's some people, we still don't know what, what's going on with them. Like, Natalia, unless I miss something, I don't think she's re-upped to the company yet. I don't know when her deal expires. That might be why we haven't seen her on TV in a couple weeks. I don't know. She was on Raw, like, every week for a while. She's actually not in one of those qualifiers for Money in the Bank, which is interesting. So that, uh, Which is very interesting, because they're putting, like, no disrespect, but, like, Ivy Nile in there, who I like, but why wouldn't you put Natalia in a qualifier? She shouldn't win. A little weird, though. But anyway, so Jack has not appeared on Raw. He got drafted. Um, he mentioned that he was drafted. He was drafted back in April to the Raw roster. He had one main event match, one or two speed matches, never appeared on television, and now we know why. It wasn't a case of him wanting to leave. He obviously wanted to stay, and it was more of a case of WWE not re-upping his deal. Now, they've done this more recently where they just don't renew deals. They don't just outright release people. I mean, they do. They did late last year with, like, Ziggler, Ali, people like that. But, like, we saw this with Gulak a few months ago. We saw this with... Uh, scripts recently as well. Their deals came up. They just didn't renew them. I think Lacey Evans, same thing last year. And now Dijak, same thing. So, um, you know, I know you've seen his work in NXT. The Retribution stuff a couple years ago was fucking terrible. But I've always been a, a longtime supporter of his from Ring of Honor to WWE, NXT. And I thought he had a great run in NXT. He was never really given a fair shot on the main roster. And then he got called up just, just to do what? I mean, they did nothing with him. They never even used him once before they let him go. They probably shouldn't have even drafted him in that case. But, uh, um, yeah, your thoughts on the whole Dijak situation? Yeah, I mean, I think just classic case of something that got called up that they really didn't have a plan for. Um, I mean, like you said, it's not like he said that he was pitching stuff. Um, but, I mean, I think he kind of slates in with the people that got called up lately that they just haven't used. I don't really know why you'd call them up. Um, if you didn't have a plan, if there wasn't a plan, if you didn't think there would be a plan, if they could tell you anything, there still wouldn't be a plan. I don't, I don't really understand the logic there, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of mind boggling that they call these people up and then they don't do anything with them. And then the people leave. It's like, what, you, what I mean, why call them up if you're not going to use them? I don't know if it's one of those things that they call them up and, just doesn't work and it doesn't they don't really agree on what they want to do and then they're not just gonna keep them in nxt forever so i just like we'll just let you go at that point if they don't see like main roster trajectory with you but i don't know it's to me it's kind of baffling and i'm not even like the biggest die jack fan but there's plenty of people they call up they don't do anything with them and then they leave and they're like well i just think it's they're in nxt they call them up and then if it just doesn't have a either vision or thought they just let them leave, but like I said, I don't know if that's just they call them up because they've hit like a certain length in NXT that they see them at, and they're like, we're not going to keep them there forever. I, I don't know. It's kind of kind of mind boggling, honestly. I just don't get it. I mean, it it still shows that even now, and it probably 
doesn't seem to be as bad as it once was when Vince was running things. But this seems like a Vince-type move, honestly, where, like, NXT's doing their own thing with some talents, and then the higher-ups... I mean, Triple H is involved in these decisions. Vince is no longer there. He hasn't been there in months. He can't blame Vince anymore. Maybe you could have credited this sort of stuff to Vince to a certain degree. The retribution stuff, you definitely can. But, like... Late last year, when all those people got let go, I mean, Triple H was still... And if Triple H really wanted to keep someone like a Ziggler, who wanted to leave anyway, but like or an Ali, or whoever was cut late last year, and a lot of those people were pretty expendable anyway at that point, he could have said something, because um, he's you know he has enough power, I would think, at this point, to salvage someone's job if he wants to. But no, I mean, this, this sort of stuff goes right through him and Nick Khan and people like that. So, Dijak's in NXT. He probably pitched to go to NXT, I would think. We'll find out soon enough through interviews and shit like that, but... He left the main roster a few years ago when Triple H first took over, took a risk on himself by going back to NXT, and some people pays all for, some people it doesn't, but he completely reinvented himself, went back to the Dijak name, ditched the T-Bar nonsense, and had a great run there. Never won any gold, but had great matches with people like Wesley. Um, he had that great triple threat over WrestleMania weekend with, uh, who was it, Josh Briggs and Obafemi. Yeah, yeah, it was great triple threat. Best match, one of the best matches of the weekend. Obviously fell short. The NXT title thing makes sense because Trick Williams wasn't feuding with anyone coming out of that show aside from fucking Noam Dars. <laughs> I mean, it makes total sense that Dijak would have been in that spot. The main roster, Triple H, whatever, was like, hey, we'll take him and then we won't do anything with him if they had the idea of that. And he also said, again, he literally started a statement here by saying, WWE never negotiated with me. So it wasn't like, again, unless that's his side of the story. It's not as if, like, he wanted a certain number and he thought higher of himself and they were just like, no. It sounds like they were they just made up their minds a while ago. We just don't want to keep them. We've got nothing for them. Creative is nothing for you. Now, again, I know it's one of those cases where WWE has a lot of talent. I understand that. You can't push everyone at once. You can't keep everybody. But at the same time, though, I know you mentioned you've never been the biggest, like, Dijak fan. But I think he's talented enough where a guy like him, for as experienced as he is, and for as enough people on the main roster who are not as experienced, I feel like you could have used a guy like him, even just to get other people over, like I would think you would want to keep him. I'm just shocked they didn't even attempt to keep him. I guess that's my bigger thing. I feel like, in my opinion, and other people have said this on social media, but I, I mean, everyone has their own opinion, they definitely dropped the ball here. Would he have been the world champion? Obviously not. But I just feel like he is good enough that you could have put him in either brand where he really could have worked with, like, maybe not Cody Rhodes necessarily, but SmackDown needs credible heels right now, and they just don't, they just, I, I don't know, they just let him go. So, do you think this is a case of WWE dropping the ball on a talent they could have done something with? Or, in your opinion, which is totally fine if you believe this, that uh, it made sense for WWE not to renew his contract? I mean, I like I said, I think at the end of the day, I think he is one of those people that are expendable. Like, yeah, like, could they have done more with him? I, I assume so. I, maybe they just couldn't get, like, the, the T-bar stench off him. And even though he like, kind of reinvented himself, they just never saw him past a certain level. Um, I mean, like I said, I think he's good. and But, I mean, I think he's, like I said, I think you could put someone else in the same role. And maybe that's what they're thinking of. I, I don't know quite now. Like you said before, I just, I don't know how there's just so much disconnect between NXT and WWE. Um, because like I said, they call them up, they have no plans to use them, and it's just like, oh, well, I'm just going to let you go. Like, I feel like they did the same thing. Like, they had said before the draft even happened that Roxanne was going to call them up. Like, did they find out that when she came out on Raw, she was a heel, so they weren't going to call her up, so mm-hmm. they called up Lyra instead? Like, I feel like there should be, like, at least someone that's, like, in the middle. I know, like, Triple H is pretty busy now with Ron Smackdown since he's the cre- in creative, but... I mean, they literally said that first after Royal Rumble, she was going to be in the draft, and then she wasn't. And then I feel like the push that Lyra's getting right now was originally meant for her. She mm-hmm. was still a baby face. So, I mean, I think it's fine because she's probably one of the bigger names they still have in NXT because they kind of blend a lot of the, like, over people. But, I don't know, it should be some someone that's working between both to kind of, like, smooth it over. Because, like I said, after WrestleMania, basically, Trick really had no one else to... <laughs> to feud against besides like Noam Dar, so I, I think they need that's kind of one thing they do need to work on. It's just kind of like blending their. I mean, it's the same company at the end of the day, but like there should be like a someone that's like in between. The, like, hey, if we're gonna call this person up, there's. They, I mean, regardless of who's in charge, there should be like you're calling out someone up. There should be a plan. Like there shouldn't like they. For example, like they got Kyrie Zane. They've done fucking jack shit with her since they brought her in. Like she had that no throwaway tag team title run that meant nothing but like now she just 
eating pinfalls on Raw. Like, why would you even bring her in if you're not really going to use her? I agree, but so that one's a little bit of a different case in the sense that they brought her back with the idea of adding her to damage control. Like, it's not as if she's just there eating pinfalls. I mean, she is eating pinfalls, but <laughs> she is. But she's not just there, like, I don't want to say Natalia, because Natalia, that's her established role. But who else is on these rosters who really isn't doing anything? Like, I'm, I'm trying to think. Most people are in a group or a tag team. Or not that they have a plan for. They've done a much better job of utilizing everyone on the show, whether they're over or not, and giving them consistent television time. I will say that. Even someone like Maxine, who isn't very good, she's gotten over through the Alpha Academy stuff and the stuff with Gable and whatnot. So they kind of have a role for a lot of people. At least with Kyrie, when they brought her back, they were like, okay, we'll put her in damage control. It's been going on for long enough where at some point, yeah, I mean, she's very talented. I would like to see her get a shot on her own again. But at least she's had the exposure. I mean, she's been on the main roster before and has been successful. So she's an established name. Someone like Dijak, though, at least in my opinion, like, they didn't even give him a shot. Like, his only shot on the main roster was that retribution nonsense, and that's literally it. The entire time he was in on the main roster or part of the Raw roster or on main event or whatever the fuck, he was called T-Bar that entire time. He was never once Dijak. And again, we said even years ago when they were the rumors of Dijak being called up were kind of starting... I'm sure we said even then, like, he has not a not a short shelf life, but, like, a limited ceiling, because especially in a Vince McMahon WWE, he's not going to be a main event guy. Is he even a main event guy? Probably not. I mean, he's not, like, he's very tall and he's great in the ring. Does he have the charisma of, like, some of the people they have on the Raw roster or SmackDown rosters right now? No, he's not. I, I just don't see him at that level, at least in WWE. But they didn't even give him that opportunity to try to get over and go in there and have great fucking matches. They just let him go before they could do that. I just feel like he was worth at least one more contract. 